सेशन नंबर टू मॉनिटरिंग यूजिंग प्रेमेथिस एजेंडा इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू मॉनिटरिंग क्लाइंट लाइब्रेरीज स्क्रैपिंग पुल एंड पुश मॉनिटरिंग एंड क्वेरिंग सर्विस डिस्कवरी नोड एक्सपोर्टर्स एंड एक्सप्रेशन ब्राउजर की वैल्यू डेटा मॉडल प्रमिथिस वर्क्स ऑन की वैल्यू पेयर्स प्रमिथिस इज नॉट मीट टू स्टोर रॉ इंफॉर्मेशन लाइक प्लेन टेक्स्ट एज इट स्टोर द मैट्रिक्स एग्रीगेटेड ओवर टाइम is not for text information the key in this case is called a metric it could be for example a cpu rate or memory uses to give more details about your metric such as my cpu has four cores and i want to have four separate metrics for them how can we do that this is where the concept of labels comes into play let's understand the labels like prometheus data model we have cpu uses and this is the value this so this is metric this is this is a key this is the value labels are designed to provide more details to your matrix by appending additional fields to it you would not simply describe the cpu rate but you would describe the cpu rate for core core one located at a certain ip as an example this is the additional value you are specifying and this additional thing whatever is given in curly braces is called a label so this label has a value like a core equal to 1 and ip equal to this so this together labels these are multiple labels we call them as labels and this is the actual metric value which we are interested in monitoring so the labels are metadata and you can do filtering on this labels like as an example where the core not in two not matching two so we can use expressions also in this labels so that will filter also so cpu uses core not equal to two or not containing two display me all the matrix and the next value this is how the labels are used to filter metric types and counter there are four ways you can describe monitoring a metric with prometheus counter in prometheus this is simplest form of metric type counter counts elements over time a counter only goes up or reset it never goes down therefore if i am talking about uh, the speed of a car then that's not counter that's wrong however if i uh, consider the kilometers traveled distance traveled by a car that is a counter that can never go down as a consequence the counter is not naturally adapted for values that can go down or for negative ones for negative values a counter is particularly suited to count the number of occurrences of a certain event on a period that is the rate at which your metric evolved over time gauges now what if you want to measure the current memory uses at a given time which can go down which is not a counter because memory can go up and can go down so gauges are the perfect choice when you are using such metrics so memory uses can go down how can it be measured with prometheus gauges helps you with that gauges are designed to handle values that may decrease over time usually they are like thermometers at any given point in time if you observe the thermometer you would be able to see the current temperature value but if gauges can go up and down except positive or negative values aren't they a superset of counters i'll not say that gauges are perfect when you want to monitor current values of a metric that can decrease over time gauges can't be used when you want to see evolution of your metric over time histogram histogram provides additional information for your matrix such as the sum of observations and the count of them 
values are aggregated in buckets with configurable upper bounds with histograms you are able to compute average as they represent the fraction of uh, the sum of your values divided by the number of values recorded compute fractional measurements on your values it allows you to know for a given bucket how many values follow a given criteria in a real world context i want to be alerted when 20% of my servers respond in more than 300 milliseconds or when my server responds in more than 300 milliseconds more than 20% of the time this is where uh, computing fractional measurements of my values will come into play and the histogram will be perfect choice for that as soon as the proportions are involved histograms can and should be used summaries summaries are an extension of histograms they provide quantiles matrix on sliding windows sliding window where last five minutes i want to say this the memory usage in last five minutes overall memory usage in last five minutes so this last five minute will always remain last five minutes so it will be always sliding if it is a, a 110 right now i am talking about from 15 to 110 if i am talking the same sentence at 4 o'clock i am saying 355 and 4 quantiles are ways to divide your probability density into ranges of equal probability like these 5 minutes are better than those 5 minutes histograms or summary which one is good it depends on the intent histograms aggregate values over time giving a sum and count function that makes it easy to uh, to see the evolution of a given matrix summaries exposes quantiles over sliding windows continuously evolving over time get the value that represent 95% of values recorded over time that's a summary we can see now that was a basic introduction of the matrix labels keys uh, different type of uh, matrix available counters gauges histograms summaries the monitoring ecosystem complete monitoring is prometheus self-sufficient or we need more tools for the complete comprehensive monitoring ecosystem the main functionality of prometheus beside monitoring is being a, uh, a time series database however when playing with the tsdb you often uh, need to visualize them analyze them and have some alerting on them the tools that compose prometheus ecosystem to enrich its functionalities are alert manager prometheus push alerts to the alert manager via rules from there you can export them to pager duty slack etc data visualization prometheus web ui is there for you you can filter it but it is not the ideal choice for visualization because uh, we have better visualization tools available and where we can integrate Prometheus with that. Service discovery can discover your targets dynamically and automatically scrap new targets on demand. This is particularly handy when playing with containers that can change their addresses dynamically in uh, Kubernetes. The use cases for Prometheus for DevOps. With all the exporters built for systems, databases, and servers, the primary target of Prometheus is clearly targeting the DevOps industry. The necessary effort to get your instances up and running is very low, and very every satellite tool can be easily activated and configured on demand. Healthcare. Nowadays, monitoring solutions are also made to support large industries providing resilient and scalable architecture for healthcare as the demand grows more and more it architectures deployed have to match the demand without a reliable way to monitor your entire infrastructure you may run the risk of having massive outage on your services 
with the healthcare think of the hospital and the monitoring systems installed in operation theaters and other labs client libraries getting you ready making your application ready for monitoring in advance at the time of development also at the time of development so before you can monitor your services you need to add instrumentation to the code via client libraries these implement the prometheus metric types choose a prometheus client library that matches the language in your which your application is written this lets you define and expose internal metrics via http endpoints on your application's instance you have like go language java or scala python and ruby all the libraries are available client libraries are available if you are developing application in any of these languages there are some unofficial third party client libraries which are available like bash dart dotnet node.js perl php r etc these are all uh, client libraries are available for these languages as well if you are developing in any of these languages when prometheus scraps your instance http endpoint the client library send the current state of all track matrix to the server if no client library is available for your language or you want to avoid dependencies you may also implement one of the supported export exposition format yourself to expose the matrix when implementing a new client library please follow the guidelines on writing the client libraries pull versus push meaning you are going to the target and scrapping the data or you are pushing the data to the database there are two approaches here prometheus will actively screens the targets in order to retrieve matrix from them this is very different from influx db for example where you would essentially push data directly to influx database influx db this is a very good example and this direction of our arrow indicate that we are going prometheus is going so prometheus is going to the target target 1 target 2 and uh, these targets so prometheus pull data every 10 seconds therefore we can say that prometheus is active whereas influx db where influx db is waiting for the customers or the clients to push the target uh, to push the data to it that means individual instances push data every 10 seconds so prometheus uh, influx db is waiting for the data to be pushed to it so therefore it is passive so there are two different approaches one is push one is pull so prometheus is pull based influx db is push based where you push the data to influx db both approaches have their advantages and inconvenient like centralized control if prometheus initiates queries to its targets your whole configuration is done on prometheus server side and not on your individual targets prometheus is one which decides who to scrap how often to scrap with push based system you may have the risk of sending too much of data towards your server essentially crashing them a pull based system enables a rate control with flexibility of having multiple scrap configuration therefore multiple rates for different targets that gives you better control so that depends on your need so prometheus is not an event based system and this is very different from other time series databases prometheus is not designed to catch individual and punctual events in time such as service outages no but it is designed to gather pre aggregated metrics which are available about your service from your service itself so you won't send a 404 message from your web service along with the message that caused the error no definitely not however you will send the fact that your service received 1404 message in last 5 minute this kind of message yes the number of messages you received so the the tag the key and the quantity so always remember we need to have the data in the form of key and the value in the number that is quantity 
So this is the basic difference between a time series database targeted for aggregated matrix and one designed to gather raw matrix. Prometheus is not for raw matrix. Target discovery is via a file exporter. For example, makes it also an ideal situation, uh, situation for stacks that rely heavily on containers and on distributed architectures. In a world where instances are created as fast as they are destroyed, service discovery is a must have for every DevOps stack. Exporters for custom applications, instrumentation is very handy as it allows you to customize the metrics exposed and how they are changed over time. For well-known applications, servers and databases, Prometheus built with vendor exporters that you can use in order to monitor your targets, we'll be doing some of them in our training. Those exporters are easily configurable to monitor your existing targets. Examples of exporters include database exporters like for MongoDB, for SQL Server, for MySQL servers, HTTP exporters for HA proxy, Apache or Nginx servers, Unix exporters, you can monitor your system performance using built-in node exporters. We are going to do that. That exposes complete system metrics out of box. So this is how the exporters work. Like for example, this is actual MongoDB instance. You install a binary MongoDB export file in the form of a Docker container or standalone binary with the you know connection details and everything related to the MongoDB. So you bind it to the MongoDB. It will pull the data, it will scrap the data from MongoDB and expose it as an API endpoint for Prometheus to pull from. So Prometheus server will go to the exporter, will pull the matrix which the exporter is collecting from the actual MongoDB instance. So in a way, these exporters are sitting in between your Prometheus and your actual target you want to scrap. Expression browser. The expression browser is available at slash graph on your Prometheus server allowing you to enter any expression and see its result enter in a table or graphed over time. This is primarily useful for ad hoc queries and debugging. For graph, it's always better to use Grafana or console templates which we are going to use. Coming up next, alerting using alert managers and you can explore client libraries at this link given. Explore service discovery online documentation also take out some time to go through these and read more on node exporters at this link given. These are self-study links for you. That's all for this session. Thank you very much.